As Republicans continue trying to further restrict reproductive rights in the two years since the Dobbs decision, Democrats are making abortion and related health care a major campaign issue. Certainly Kamala Harris as vice president led the way on that. On the convention stage last night, we heard heart-wrenching stories from two women and a married couple about the restrictions in red states like theirs, including a young woman from Kentucky, Hadley Duvall. I was raped by my stepfather after years of sexual abuse. I can't imagine not having a choice. But today, that's the reality for many women and girls across the country because of Donald Trump's abortion bans. He calls it a beautiful thing. What is so beautiful about a child having to carry her parents' child? And joining me now is Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, who praised Hadley for her bravery at the convention last night to be so public about her experience. The governor was on the short list as a potential Harris VP, so you went through all of that. <laughs> so why do you think abortion uh, is and should be such a big issue for Democrats? Well, it's a, it's a big issue because this is a constitutional right that was ripped away from my mom, my wife, my daughter, and every other woman in America. It removes the right for women to make choices about their own body, about whether to pursue IVF, uh, which is now under attack. They're even being attacked on choices about whether to have children at all. And then you see someone like Hadley Duvall, uh, an amazing person, one of the bravest people, certainly, that I have ever met. And when she shares her story, you understand. You can see the, the actual real impact that this has on people. And for her to have gone through what she went through, to have had no options if it were today, is just simply wrong. And I think everybody can agree with that. You know, and the other two women were from uh, Texas and Louisiana and had had non-viable pregnancies in some cases and uh, had no options. Um, J.D. Vance, I don't know if you know this, is blasting what you said this morning on Morning Joe. Okay. okay? I'm going to just prepare you for this. Um, saying that when, when, well, let me take a look at what he said about you. J.D. Vance calls pregnancy resulting from rape inconvenient. Like, inconvenience wow. is traffic. I mean, it is, uh, it make him go through this. So what he's saying is that you were somehow suggesting, um, he said, what the hell is this? Why is Andy Bashir? he tweeted this out, uh, wishing that a member of my family would get raped. What oh. a disgusting person. So how do you respond to that? I mean, well, it's, is that what you were talking about? Of course not. It's ridiculous, but it's also deflection. I mean, J.D. Vance knows that he and Donald Trump are so wrong on this issue. And so he's trying to make himself the victim. Listen, Hadley Duvall was a victim. The, the women that were on the stage last night, the couple that had to go through a non-viable pregnancy are, are victims. You know, as a man, J.D. Vance will never have to face any of this personally, but it's sad that he lacks the empathy to be able to put himself in a different position and to understand why having uh, exceptions, having reproductive freedom is so important in the first place. Obviously, I'd never wish harm on anyone. And it just, again, deflection, trying to make himself and Donald Trump the victims. And also get your reaction to uh, former President Trump and Lindsey Graham, for that matter, both saying that abortion should not be a major issue this campaign. Well, tell that again to those women and that couple that were on the stage last night. Uh, their pain, what they've had to, to, to go through. Uh, and, and you look at, at the fact that in so many states, it is now uh, so incredibly difficult. And, and the people of America uh, are, are responding. I mean, everywhere where this has been on the ballot, we put it on the ballot in my election last year in a state that Donald Trump won by what, about 26 points. And I won re-election by five percentage points. It tells you that the American people are fed up at this extremism. Uh, they want uh, a better tomorrow. And we're going to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walls to get that better tomorrow. Now, I want to turn to the economy, which is the issue that most Americans say is the most important to them. 
Uh, Kamala Harris is doing somewhat better in some of the swing state polls than Joe Biden had and some of the national polls, which are less important as a barometer of what's going to really happen on Election Day with the Electoral College being all that counts. But on the economy as an issue, she's inching up only about two points better than Joe Biden had been and nine point lead still for Donald Trump on the economy. Uh, Why can't Democrats kind of crack that? Well, we need to make sure that we're out there talking about what both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have done uh, for the economy. Joe Biden's plan is about a long-term healthy economy. We're reshoring so much of our supply chain so we never go through what we did in the pandemic ever again. We're investing in future industries like electric vehicles and, uh, and chips. Kamala Harris's plan is about the right now. It's about being able to afford your first home, both in expanding supply and the affordability. It's about middle-class tax credits that are going to help uh, so many families out there. It's about capping prescription drug costs, which we all know can be so challenging. But but it's it's about talking about it. It's about showing it. It's about showing up to places that wouldn't have been built without your policies, and I think they're going to do that. And, you know, finally, you just were talking about the numbers. I mean, you <laughs> survived a re-election in a red state, where Trump had such a big lead and you still won by five points. What is your message to other Democrats who really need to do that? That's what they need to do in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, as well as a lot of red states. Well, my message is we've got to run and govern where people wake up in the morning. And they're not thinking about the polls. They're not really even thinking about this election. They're thinking about their job, whether they make enough to support their family. They're thinking about their next doctor's appointment, the roads and bridges they're going to drive, the public school that their kids go to, and their public safety. Those are places, especially with the extremism that Donald Trump Trump has embraced where we can move the needle. And when we do that, when we improve people's lives, we don't move a state or the country to the right or the left. We just move it forward. And that's what people want, a better life. Thank you so much, Governor Andy Bashir from the great state of Kentucky. Thanks for having me.